you mentioned WWE. What? So what all happened there? You came in, you were working at the performance center. You had hosted a WrestleMania part of the kickoff show. Um, what, what was like your first interaction with WWE and sort of the bright lights that, that, uh, dazzled your eyes over there? Well, you know, obviously for one growing up and and being a a fan of it, right. I mean, I, I don't know anybody that was around my age that didn't watch WWE just growing up in general. It was like I, every, every time I got home from school, it was, I was going to watch if I had or practice, I was going to watch WWE. So just watching it from that standpoint, but I started talking to Paul, um, Triple H before I retired, actually, probably like in 2011, we were talking about it in, at an event. And we started kind of going back and forth. It's a, an event in LA, I, I believe it was. And I think I came out there one night stand. I, was, I did something, it was a pay-per-view I did where I, I was, it was a, uh, in San Diego and I was a part of the show, got really good feedback. And then we started to keep in conversation. I told Paul, I said, hey, I'm gonna retire here probably in the next, you know, whatever, right? And remember I told you I want to go work with NFL Network. So the plan was to be to work with NFL Network and then train you know, half the time and the other half the time spend in Orlando at the Performance Center. Yeah. Um, so that and then that was the deal. So I was going down. I, the, first of all, the workout was I, don't, I want everybody to know the damn workout is brutal. What did like, they I don't, put I don't, you through? What was the training? Hell, I, I think, you know. I think they wanted to see if they can, you know, break, like, you know, just take me through the ring. But it was a straight hour nonstop. Right. And I try to tell people that those ropes, like there's, there's metal under those ropes. So my rib, when I got done with this work, I was all bruised up. I was like severely bruised up and went down there, had a great, uh, Billy Gunn was my in-ring um, coach. Right. Love Philly. Uh, and then Regal did, you know, was on the grappling side and some other stuff, right? Um, and after we were done, you know, every week, the, the NXT, they're down there, and then you do that, that weekly, what do you call it, the, week, the weekly promo cut. Yeah, with, with Dusty. Was, yeah, did with you Dusty. do one? You did one with Dusty? With Dusty. So, no, so let me tell you. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm in, um, <laughs> so, got done my workout, uh, you know, went and, um, Everybody's there for about two hours doing their promos. And this is when everybody who's in, you know, on the main stage now was down there. And I'm sitting in the back and two hours go by and I tap my publicist. I said, hey, let's, you know, let's get ready to get out of here. And right as I'm about to get up and leave, Dusty said, 56, I bet you didn't know I was going to do this, but uh, bring your ass on down. So... Uh I'm we no practice, no nothing, right? I, I I haven't gone over anything yet, and so I got about twenty seconds to figure out what the hell I'm gonna say. I know I I had who was in the crowd? Do you remember who was like Paige there? Was that there. Were- um, Xavier was there. Fuck, man. Um, I mean, I guess like probably like Sami Zayn would have maybe been there. Yeah, maybe yeah, he maybe- was there. I'm trying to think of like who all was like kind of in that class. Maybe like Sasha, Becky, Charlotte, all yes, those girls were yes, probably yes. there. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was them. <laughs> right. So I'm saying I got 20 seconds to figure out what, what the hell I'm gonna say when I get up there. And first of all, it's Dusty Rose. I'm not telling, you know, I'm not telling him no. Dusty tell you get your ass up there. You, you're going. He did and it to so, me once too. I was f- sweating. Yeah, I was sweating bullets. And I looked at my publicist like <laughs> Like somebody was snatching me away from my house, like I was a ten-year-old kid and shit. And I was like, "Oh shit!" You know, <laughs> like grab me, say something, you know, do something. Throw me a and, lifeline. Uh, yeah, and I was like, "Okay, cool." I got up there and I just did what I knew best without having anything really put together or practicing. And I kind of just started ripping on certain people who I saw already, already do their promos because I was watching the whole time. So I just started ripping on certain people. And so um, when I got done. What's his name? British, um, uh, uh, Brash, uh, the JBL, JBL, yeah, JBL. Yeah. All right. Yes. JBL. So when I got done, JBL pulls me over to the side. And he said, listen, that's one of the best promos I've ever seen out of anybody who's never had any practice ever is what he told me. That's and awesome. so everything, so everything was good. Right. So I went, um, and I went back to, uh, I actually, I sat in the room and talked football with Dusty Rose for three hours. It was one of the best, I told my publicist, I was like, go back to the hotel. I'm staying here. Me and Dusty 
we we sat in a, we sat in this little office in there. We talked football for three hours. That's awesome. Um, and it was one of the best conversations I had. So we I left, went back to, to NFL Network, and now I'm trying to work out schedules. The contract is, you know, we've now talking contract. And one of the biggest holdups, I think, too, is that this whole lights out thing. We go back to me owning lights out and name rights. So that kind of ruffles some feathers a little bit too. Um, but all in all, I think that really didn't work out. They were, launch, they were launching the, w, the network mm-hmm. around that time. And there were a bunch of layoffs and it was a lot going on right around that time. I think that they laid off like 10% of all, all employees for WWE. Yeah, I feel like I, I remember that all kind of happening all at once too with the network launching and all of that. So what they wanted to have the name lights out for you if you were going to work there? In, in a way, in a way. Yeah. It was like, come in as Sean Merriman and we'll figure everything else out. And I said, well, guys, look, I've already, you know, kind of built this name. And more importantly, you want you want to have this there. I mean, yeah. Um, and I work with everybody in the, every license department, everybody in every division. I knew everybody there within the company. Like everybody who was somebody, I knew them, talked to them on a daily basis. So I knew exactly what they wanted and what they needed for me to do. Yeah. And I told them, I said, look, you, lights out is what you guys want. So let's figure this out first. And then it, it just kind of fizzled out after that. Um, I did some stuff on the, on the network, you know, hold by hosting WrestleMania, uh, Monday Night Raw, and I believe I did a SmackDown or something like that too. But it look, it was, and I still talk to a lot of people there, mm-hmm. still to this day. You know, um, and who knows? Really? Who knows? I mean, I I just I remember when all that was happening because I remember you coming in. I remember there's like a bit of a buzz. There's like Sean Merriman's here. He's supposed to be signing. We don't know what's going on, but I feel like you were especially of like that NXT era as they were building up the performance center and all of that, you were like the first like legit athlete that they were trying to bring in. Right. Yeah. That's the way I remember it anyways. Cause yeah. I do remember there a buzz around you coming in for that. Um, and that was, and that was their whole thing. They, they, you know, they love monsters, right. Was they, yeah. they come and they want, you know, the big, the big guy, the athletic guy, and they wanted to go after athletes. And I've always said the more athletes should be doing that. Um, you know, my boy Mojo, uh, you know, playing, playing ball and got a couple other guys who played, you know, played ball as well, but I, it's the perfect fit. When you're looking for looks, athleticism and what they're trying to build, yeah. they should be going after more former athletes. Certainly, especially when somebody can come in and bring in that charisma and all that. Um, and I know now they're, they're working alongside with the NCAA with that NIL situation. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but I think they're yeah. signing what, like 50, 50 different people, the other contracts or something um, outside of uh, outside of their sport. So kind of cool to see them start to integrate these other athletes into uh, into professional wrestling. I'm excited to see what they do with that.